From WNEP, the news station, this is 2023, a look back. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this year end special on Newswatch 16. I'm Chelsea Strube. 2023 was incredibly special for me as we were able to take a look, a closer look at so many things happening right here in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania through my weekly segment, Check It Out with Chelsea. From out of the ordinary exercise experiences in the studio, in the air, and in the water, to learning more about something we might find on the shelf at our grocery store or search and rescue at a scene. This segment has opened my eyes to so many fun and exciting things happening right here in our area all year long, including flight lessons. Jordan Marzoff is a certified flight instructor at Valley Aviation in Forty Fort. Yeah, so what that means is basically I'm a teacher, right? So I'm certified to teach students how to fly an airplane. Jordan is a recent graduate of Mary Woods Aviation Program. Teaching others how to fly is a good way for him to get his necessary flying hours before he can become a commercial pilot. At the same time, it also makes you a better pilot because you're teaching other people how to fly, but you're also sharing the passion at the same time for flying. So it's just kind of like a win-win situation. Jordan is taking us on an introductory flight the first step for anyone looking to take flight lessons. Before so we, we get up in the air, we must make airplane. sure everything on aircraft November 172 Tango Hotel is good to go. So first, you're going to do this, is I want you to check the prop, okay? So what you're going to do is run your hand across the edges right here. Make sure it feels nice and smooth, right? Feels pretty good. Then we check things like the wheels and the here. instruments on the outside and of the plane before getting inside. So pop the door open right here. I'll help you in and I'll get on the other side. Here you go, you're Can getting I, in. Oh my gosh, you're not, wait, are you, you're gonna be sitting next to me. Yes, I will be. Then there is a whole checklist to complete once you are strapped in. All right, passenger brief. So we talked about the door, right? How to use it, how we open and close it. Seatbelt harness is fastened. Brakes were holding under set. Avionics are off. Circuit breakers are in, checked. And our GPS all set up, which is good. All right, you ready to taxi? Oh my gosh. All right, so we'll do it together, but I'll get us out there and okay. feel how we got taxi. Then it was time to take the plane out onto the runway and prepare for takeoff. Okay, we took it off. We took off. All right, now we're going to do this. I'm in the air. You're in the air. Look up. You can see everything we're going to see happen. Come on, come on. Your first time in the air, your instructor will go over okay, all of these gauges with you and will let you control the plane under their supervision. I'm fine. I'm fine enough? Yeah. I have control of this aircraft? This is your aircraft right now. You're fine. But what goes up must come down. There's that runway. Ready? So we're going to hold it. We're going to hold it. And that plane wants to sink. We start pulling back. There's that stall horn. And here we go. Nice and easy landing. That's it. We're on the ground. We're on the ground? That's it. A good landing. You can't tell if you land or not. Wow. It's pretty good, huh? Great. So that's what we do. That's, that's an intro flight. Go up with the plane and have some fun. Excellent. Chelsea Stroop, Newswatch 16, Luzerne County. There you go. If flying actual airplanes isn't your thing, there's a club in central Pennsylvania that's willing to teach you how to fly model airplanes, the Susquehanna Valley Modelers. A group of individuals that get together that enjoy aviation. And by and large, most of us can't afford full scale, so we do the next best thing. We build models and then we fly them. Forward is down. Backwards is up, left is That's left, right is right. Correct. Except when the plane is facing Coming to, to you, me, then it's that opposite. Changes. It took a little getting used to, but it was a lot of fun and a little less stressful than the real thing. From flying aircrafts to flying animals, something really cool I got to check out this year was the science of bird banding. In the spring, we joined researchers from the University of Scranton and Keystone College at Lackawanna State Park to catch migrating songbirds that are being studied for research. Two birds in the hands is worth how many in the bush? 
That, so that information is available not only for the bird lab, but other researchers. So other people at other institutions might look at captures and capture rates over the years and things like that and do, uh, make, do research, do uh, pu uh, generate publications and things from that. Researchers and students do this annually. And not only in the spring. In the fall, it's time to catch nocturnal birds to study their migration habits like these sawwit owls being studied by a PhD candidate at Binghamton University. What we're seeking to understand with this research is why each year there are more females caught each year um, compared to males. It took everything I had not to I take one of these cuties. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I calmed him down. Yeah. I calmed him right down. From the birds to the bees, owls and songbirds were not the only flying friends we learned about this year. Many more animal encounters coming up when this recap of 2023's Check It Out with Chelsea returns. Springtime is when bees are the busiest as flowers start to bloom. And that's when we got to see the ins and outs of a bee colony and what beekeeping is like. The inner workings of a beehive are extremely complex. So complex, Harold Kiner in Slocum Township has been at it for 11 years and says there's still more he has to learn. You're still a beginner for the first 20 years, and that's just how you feel. But regardless of the learning curve, Harold says it's worth it. What I like about it is when you go into the hive, your focus is on the hive. Your focus is on the bees. You forget about all the other stuff in the world. So we suited up and went to check out a few of the more than 50 hives Harold has at his home. The box is a hive, the bees are the colony. The top part of many of these hives is where the bees will store the majority of the nectar and pollen they collect and keep for nutrients. She was pollinating a flower, she brought it back. She's looking for a cell to put it into. Then down below is for more storage and where the queen will lay her eggs. Each bee in the hive has an important job that contributes to the queen's success. So she just has like a really long skinny abdomen. tail? Abdomen. abdomen? Yes. Females are the worker bees. He looks busy in there. Yep. She. She. They're all she's. 90, 95% of them are she's. Ooh, that one's a big one. Yeah, that's a drone. So that's a boy? Yes. And those that aren't building cells in the hive to store food or for the queen to lay eggs in are going out and getting food. Once the bees have found a food source, they shake for the attention of other ladies in the hive and then wiggle to let them know where it can be found. The distance that she waggles tells the bees how far away they need to go for food. She's shaking a lot. So yeah. She's saying you need to go all the way to New Angola. Pretty much, yes. The male drones really only have one job. Mate with virgin queens. And when they do, they die, immediately die. So he hasn't done it yet? No, no, or he wouldn't be here. The queen bee leaves the hive once to mate with several other drone bees from different colonies. Then based on the structure of the hive, she knows whether to lay a female worker bee egg or a male drone egg. And do the queen here. can control whether or not she's, she's laying a drone or a- Yes, she doesn't fertilize the drone egg. Because okay. drones, drones have no father, but they've got a grandfather. It's a crazy situation. The queen will lay thousands of eggs each day and live about one to two years. The other bees live an average of about six weeks. Now, we've only skimmed the surface of the intricacies of a bee colony here. If you want to learn more, you should go check it out, too. Chelsea Stroop, Newswatch 16, Luzerne County. Police canines can be asked to enter all kinds of situations, so it's best for them to be prepared. That's why several law enforcement canines and their handlers from throughout the viewing area took time over the summer to water and boat train at Harvey's Lake. The dogs from Lackawanna and Luzerne counties went for a boat ride and jumped from the boat into the water to catch a bad guy and entered the water from the shoreline too. You don't want the first time a dog experiences something to, is to be during a deployment. So we try and expose the dogs to uh, all, everything we can think of. This was one of the many training sessions these dogs with the Penn Vet Working Dog Center had throughout the year. From real dogs to ones made from balloons, we invited Your that balloon guy to the Wyoming Valley yeah, Newsroom to walk perfect. us through the art of balloon tying and the magical things that can be made. While Mike Trevora seems like a professional, tying balloons is not his day job, at least not yet. You might remember him from Newswatch 16 story in 2021, where he was making people smile as a flagger with balloon animals on his head. Other people are smiling at you because you're doing balloons and making 
them happy. It, it makes me even more happy. So it's like, and it's, it's just, that's really what, what made me start chasing it. Michael <laughs> helped us not only to make a balloon dog, but a balloon mermaid as well. Oh. From balloon art to the culinary arts. Earlier this year, we learned how to make some favorite foods of NEPA, along with a special dessert. That's all coming up next on Newswatch 16. While talkback callers argued over how to say the word pierogi, we went to Nanny Coke to learn how to make them. The chefs at Nipa Rogi invited us in and took us through the entire pierogi making process from making the Ooh, buffalo chicken this filling. This is heavy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How much chicken is in here? 30, 30 pounds. 30 pounds? <laughs> wow. Two to cutting the dough and stuffing it inside. Look at it, it looks Beautiful. like a pierogi. Yes, uh, great job. Some of our professional pierogi pinchers have a hard time with the buffalo chicken wing. You winged it, get it? <laughs> then we'll have them and boiling them they until they're the ready top. for storage and for sale. Another staple of our area, kielbasi. Tarnowski's kielbasi shop has been around for decades, first starting out in a garage in Glen Lyon. We stopped by the shop in Nanny Coke over the summer to see how NEPA's favorite sausage is made. This kielbasi is a mixture of pork, beef, and spices. Then it gets put into a casing. Now for Thanksgiving and Christmas, this shop cranks out close to 10,000 pounds of kielbasi. And for Easter, it's even more than that. All right, now it's time for dessert. This year we learned how to make an Eastern European Jewish dessert bread called babka. The owner and head baker at Bread Service invited us into his at-home bakery, where we got to see how he runs his sourdough shop and make chocolate babka by rolling out the dough, adding the filling and braiding it, and then letting it bake. Adam tells us there's a lot of love and creativity in this space even before it became his bakery. When I moved back to the area, I inherited this house from my mom who passed away about 15 years ago now. And this was her old art studio. It sort of has become, you know, my studio, our creative space. So it's kind of some nice transfer over there. You can find many items from bread service around northeastern Pennsylvania. Along with learning how to make popular foods in our area, we also found out where you can learn many different dance styles. Irish step dancing, line dancing, and more. We'll check it out next on Newswatch 16. I'm not gonna lie, this weekly segment has allowed me to do things I've only thought about doing in my dreams, and that includes a dance competition back in February, when I participated in the Dancing Stars of Wilkesbury, a fundraiser modeled after Baby. ABC's ah. Dancing with the Stars. In the annual event, 10 local celebrities are paired with area performers to compete to raise money for the Kiss Theater Company, an inclusive children's theater company in Wilkesbury. As an educator, it's really inspiring to see how an event like this it has inspired people from all walks of life, all walks of professions to come together for students to find their voice on stage. With your support, I raised more than $14,000 for the theater. And that raised more than $100,000 total at this event at the Kirby Center. The introduction to any hobby starts with a few basic steps, as I learned when I got a lesson in Irish step dancing. We learned that warming up the ankles is one of the most important things you can do. For these dancers at Joy School of Irish Dance on North Main Street in Pittston, after the warm-ups, they showed us the basic steps that are the foundation of any Irish step dancing performance. But wait, there's more. We learned line dancing is a great way to meet people in DuPont at the host company where we met many people. Every Tuesday night, they get out on the dance floor in cowboy boots, follow along with the collar, and dance to classic routines or new ones. So she's going to teach this, and everybody's going to learn it. And and you were supposed to come out and just dance tonight. Just dance tonight, there, Chelsea. <laughs> the dancing here includes a wide range of music, not only country songs. It includes pop and new age music too. If you followed along this year, you know that if we weren't dancing, there was a good chance we were running. Coming up next on Newswatch 16's 2023 recap of Check It Out with Chelsea, we go through some of the sports we tried out this year and how I took home the gold. Stay with us. I have to admit, when I signed up to play with the Lady Knights hockey team in Pittston Township, I didn't know how to ice skate. So that was the first step in this Check It Out. Then we joined an adult learn to play hockey session that takes place regularly at the Revolution Ice Center. Then it was time to get on the ice with the Lady Knights who were fast, fierce, and friendly. 
My favorite thing about being on this team is that it's a lot of girls and they're very friendly and it's it's pretty fun. Do you think other girls should come out here and do this too? Yeah. From the ice to the asphalt, over the course of this year, we checked out a lot of different opportunities to run for a cause, including the first ever Wyoming Valley run that took place back in September. A 10 mile run that went from Pittston all the way to Wilkesbury. Along the way, we spoke with volunteers as well as runners to find out what's on their mind as they take on a challenge like this. French fries, post race eats, and cold ice baths. Running on coffee. Ready to go, legs hurting a little bit. Just about to hit Kingston, a little over halfway. Beautiful day in the Wyoming Valley. Then we went from a 10 miler to a 26.2 mile run. As I brought you along when Team Allied Services and you completed the TCS New York City Marathon. Let's check that out. Preparing for the TCS New York City Marathon yeah, takes going. months of training. That might include some bumps along the way, but when the day finally comes, it's out the door of your hotel room at 5 a.m and onto a bus with other runners taking part on behalf of charities from around the world. We all watch the sunrise over the same bridge we'll soon run across. When we arrive in Staten Island, we're separated into different groups. Here, we meet up with other runners from Team Allied Services and you. I can tell you we are going to have a beautiful day today. Everyone's going to finish. Everyone's going to have a great day. 40 minutes before our start time, we are sent to our corrals and given instructions. Then we head to the starting line with thousands of other runners. Have a little dance party, honor our country and our host. The anticipation mounts here at the start. And, and then. The first two miles take us over the Verrazano Bridge. Then we're in Brooklyn for the next 11 miles, where we see nonstop action from people on the sidewalks cheering us on, celebrating our hard work from top to bottom. We had our first hydration station here too. It was a nonstop party featuring music, costumes, even animals. I really cannot emphasize enough the impact, the energy from this crowd has on your momentum as you continue to push to the halfway mark before a quick three miles through Queens. Then the sounds of cheering stops as you cross over what feels like a very steep Queensboro Bridge and loop around into Manhattan. Mile 16 is where I was lucky enough to have more than a dozen family members waiting for me with hugs and motivation to get me through the last 10 miles that continue through Manhattan and go over another bridge into the Bronx. We lost some energy in the Bronx, but picked it right back up as we crossed our final bridge and ran into our founding member of Team Allied Services and you. How's it going, Steve? You feel beautiful. You feel beautiful? Yeah. Looking We're good. Flying. We're flying. flying. Then it's back into Manhattan for another two miles and into Central Park that was packed with support. My name was written on my arm and hundreds of people screamed it, which truly helped me get across the finish line. We did it, all of us. Chelsea Stroop, Newswatch 16, reporting from the finish line of the New York City Marathon. Check it out with Chelsea had an amazing year. Right now I'm planning 2024. So if you have any ideas, please send them my way to the email below. Thank you for joining me. Newswatch 16 at 5 is next.